everybody. Welcome into the call up. Susanna Collins alongside myself, Jillian Sackovitz. <laughs> Hi, Jill. I just uh, want to point out, wait, this way. Yes, yes there you I go. put up my call up jersey. Finally, finally. For those of take- you listening to the call up, we got these customized jerseys from the Colorado Rapids, the only team PSNE teams if you're out there. Yeah. Um, to give us customized jerseys. And then they say the call up on the back and cool retro letters with a, with a 20. So cute. We did, I we finally, hung with them in 2020. I finally decorated my, my at home studio set with it. Um, Cause awesome. Jill's been displaying hers proudly and I just was completely missing the boat. So it's finally up. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it over my shoulder. On We're my a team. Right. It looks great. Yay. Uh, we have such a great show for you guys today. Um, including how and, if we have found Zen, that seems to be like everyone's big question. Like, what are you doing to relax? Mm. Uh, we hang out with LAFC's Mark Anthony K. And uh, we discovered this thing called Goalie Wars. Sure did. And we discuss insane purchases because we know we are not alone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, I feel like this is one of the things that we haven't discussed enough about <laughs> quarantine. Well are said. The, are the impulse purchases that have been made. A lot of mine, and this is interesting because, hey, guess what, Instagram? It's working. I will buy, I'll get like those ads on my feed and then I'm like, whoa, that looks amazing. I have to have it. And then all of a sudden you look like this with all these like lotions and potions that you don't need. I am not, for those listening, I have um, at least five different bottles of like face serums, moisturizers, hair product. And then also these hair scrunchies that I decided I needed like 10 hair scrunchies. Why? I don't know, but, but this is just, this is just a sample of of the impulse purchases I have made whilst in quarantine. It's not great. 10 is a modest number for a hair scrunchie (laughs) connoisseur like yourself. I mean, come on, you wear them every show. It's true. I always have one on my wrist, but. But I mean, excessive, excessive. What about you? What have been some of your purchases? Uh, people at home, please tell us what yours were too. Cause it'll just yeah. make us feel so much better. Uh, a couple of mine. And I had a day, I think Suze, I sent you a picture. I texted it to you. And I said, <laughs> I have no idea what's in any of these boxes, like four or five Amazon boxes showed up and you know, money is tight right now. Everyone <gasps> is losing work, pay cuts. Like life is tough. I do not need to be buying anything, but um, I bought a pair of ugly curtains that I'm returning. (laughs) They look horrible. Don't, don't need them. Nothing wrong with the ones I have. At least that was a home improvement item. You know, there was something you could accept that it wasn't. Um, (laughs) Guys listening. I apologize because this bores you, but a hair wand for Mm -hmm. beach waves because I'm going to the beach anytime soon. Very important. Very important. And then last but not least, Chic oh, the w- German <laughs> red wine glasses. Eight of them. And Do I drink red wine? I was just going to say, Jillian Sackovitz does not drink no, red never. wine, people. She doesn't. I've never seen you drink a glass of red wine since I've known you. So th- no. that was definitely, that was a that was a questionable purchase, Jill. For so sure. make and me eight, feel better, people. Tell me I'm not alone. I'm also not having eight people over like for the for maybe probably six to 12 months. Well, I promise if you ever. When, this, when this is all over, I do drink red wine. So Will I you think drink eight glasses. Over. Sure. Just, you, you know, maybe each one up a little bit and then I'll just take six. I don't <laughs> like the little bit, but I'll fill up eight. Okay. <laughs> Deal. We have some great here for this is this week. And as you all know, we have been just taking the the, the here for this isn't just straight up saying we're here for all of it because we're trying to keep this whole thing positive right now. Amen. So Jill, I'm going to let you talk about this one because you are the one that found this and sent this link to me and it was phenomenal. So MLS tweeted out this link, um, goalie wars for any of you that follow MLS on Twitter, they love to kind of throw it back sometimes to like things back in the day. So this was part of, they used to do these skills challenge and we, we had a skills challenge last year um, at the all-star game, but the, one of the funniest things about it was that there were no goalkeepers participating in the skills challenge last year. And they were all like, nope. I remember talking to Nick Ramondo and he was like, yep, I'm want no part of this. 
but was not always the case. Back in the day, there was a thing called goalie wars. The goals are maybe like, I don't know, 30, 40 feet from each other. Mm-hmm. And the goalies are shot putting. Like, I don't <laughs> feel like bef- this is good for your arm or your shoulder. The goalies are basically like <laughs> shot putting the soccer ball into the net and the other one's trying to save it. And they're just going back and forth. Back and forth. In this very aggressive, warlike way. And it's called Goalie Wars. And mm-hmm. all I have to say is to celebrate MLS coming back, when in fact that does happen, I will be irate if Goalie Wars is not a part of I know. 2020 I think in some way. I, I was a part of the skills challenge last year. And so I think I'm going to try to put forward like we need to, because those goalies were just, they were just kicking it during the entire skills challenge. And they-, they Unacceptable. And, uh, unacceptable. They need to get involved. And I am so here for goalie wars because it, it's savagery. It's savagery out on that field. Okay, okay what else Something do we else I'm here for this week is- and I am not saying this to sound annoying because it sounds annoying saying it out loud. Zen apps. Okay. Okay. Suze, you and I have both been a part of um, like other people's Instagram lives, radio shows, and like the number one question, and we ask it all the time to our own mm-hmm. guests. And it's so annoying because you feel like a loser because you don't have a good answer when people say, what are you doing <laughs> to, to stay centered? And you're like, drinking, drinking I wine. Know. I don't feel centered at all. I, I stare at my phone. I watch the news for 12 hours. I obsess over it. Um, don't, then I don't sleep well. Like I don't have an answer. So people have told me a friend of mine, who's a nurse, like she really actually has to like find her whatever, uh, calm. Mm -hmm. And she told me about a couple Zen apps. MLS had also suggested a Zen app for us. So I downloaded four of them and I've kind of been trying them out all week. Here's what they are. Um, waking up is one of them, calm and insight timer. And then headspace is the one that MLS has linked up with. Yep. So headspace, I still need to try. And for all of you at home, kind of like, let me know which ones you've used. But I listened to a podcast where they said the best thing that you can do before you go to bed and in the morning, I'll admit I haven't done great in the morning, but I've been doing it before I go to bed is just one minute. Right. And you think it sounds so easy, but I'll get into like 11 seconds on my timer. All of a sudden I'm like thinking about Instagram, thinking about what I need to do tomorrow. And like the whole point is for one minute, all you do is concentrate on breathing. And it sounds nuts, but waking up that app has a great like little timer. But I think the one I love the most is this one called Insight Timer. It's amazing. You just go to your timer and you can pick your like little bowl, you know, when someone dings a bowl in yoga, like, Duh. yeah, you just, you just pick your bowl, like, and it goes ding. And then you pick your ambient sound that you want to hear while you're sitting there, okay. sit on the side of your bed, sit in your bed, sit on the side of the couch, sit, sit on the toilet, like sit anywhere that you can just get peace and do it <laughs> for one minute. I'm not saying it's like a perfect fix, but if you can kind of do it before you go to bed, I haven't hated it. And I'm going to try to get past a minute, but I'm taking baby steps. Something that has really centered me Mm -hmm. is music. Um, And so I have, I have a record player. I love, I have, I have actually a pretty incredible vinyl collection. And so I have been really good. I've been sort of going through all my records and I will play one record a day. And it just, I don't, music to me is very healing. And so that has been something that's worked for me to just kind of help me get a little bit more balanced and centered. So it's not necessarily a Zen app, but it's just a tool that, that kind of helps calm me. Whatever works, sister. And sometimes you can match your t-shirts to the record. (laughs) Okay. So speaking of music. Ah, um, this is so exciting. So this is our third here for this. And I can say unabashedly without a shadow of a doubt, we are both here for yeah. NYCFC's Goody Terrarensen, who is from Iceland and he signed with the team ahead of this, this 2020 season, wrote wow. and performed a song to kind of make just just make people feel better let people know that we're all in this together and he posted this on uh twitter and nycfc posted on twitter it's 
phenomenal. Not only is he a really good guitar player and and songwriter. Here it is. His voice. His voice, Jill. Suze, you can add this to your Zen music. I'm gonna. Oh. Yeah, like I thought it'd be cute and uh he like sang on his couch, but I'm like, oh, this is very good. He so. is incredible. He's incredible. Um on May Day, Yes Network is going to air NYCFC Home for the City. Um, on Friday, front row soccer. I think Goody's going to be. I think he might be making a little appearance and performing. So you can look forward to that. But Goody may be like literally a famous musician by the end of quarantine. He might be. And I would. We need him to stay on the it. soccer field. Do you think NYCFC is a little nervous? Like, oh no, we don't want uh, American Idol to pick this up or whatever. Exactly, exactly. But it's oh, well done, Goody. Thank you, thank you for sharing your gift with all of us because it's what we all needed. Here for it all day long. Call up cares. We have call up cares. So this is a, a new segment that we have been doing where we kind of shed a spotlight on clubs and what they are doing in terms of community outreach during this time. And so we have Mark Anthony K coming on the show later. And so we thought it would be appropriate to highlight LAFC and what they are doing. And last week, this is so cool, the 3252 teamed up with the LAFC Foundation to deliver masks to two LA United school district grab mm. and go sites. Um, they've given out nearly 2 million meals at these drive up locations since their opening and they're run by the volunteers. So they needed masks because these people are just out there handing out food. They were running out. Um, and so the 3252 committed to the purchase of 3,252 masks and they delivered it to the and volunteers, which is so cool. And the 3252, for those of you that don't know, is the official LAFC yes. supporter section. Yes. So well done, LAFC and the 3252. Keep doing all the good things. Snaps to you. He came to MLS three years ago with LAFC for their inaugural season, and he's been there ever since. Canadian international Mark Anthony K. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's we are, it. we're so jealous. We're both like, look at yeah. it. But look at that beautiful blue LA sky. Oh, yeah. big flax sitting outside, making us look at that blue sky in LA. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next time I'll stay inside for you guys. <laughs> so um, as we mentioned, you're a Canadian international. You grew up in Toronto, now live in downtown LA. Uh, two things. What is kind of life in the streets like in Los Angeles during all of this? And how's your family back home in Canada? Yeah, um, it, it, it's obviously a, a massive change compared to what it usually is in downtown L.A. There's usually a lot of people out. It's a very busy city. Um, I feel like because a lot of people come work here. So during the days, there's just so much foot traffic. But now there's there's not really many people on the street. You'll still see a couple cars here and there, but it's not as much as a dead town as people would think, but people have done a good job of kind of doing the whole social distancing and, you know, trying to stay indoors. So um, it, it's kind of cool to see how quickly everyone has adapted to the new regime. Mm -hmm. um, but I still do see people outside and I'm kind of like, why are you guys outside? <laughs> like, I always judging. want to ask ever. Yeah, I always want to ask. Like I could see from my balcony people walking, and I'm just like, okay, where where are you going? Go <laughs> start? Okay, that's cool. You should start yeah. yelling at them from. Your I was balcony. gonna say you could be like quarantine, please. Yeah. <laughs> Get inside. Exactly. Get inside. So, uh, no, it's it, it's been pretty cool um, in that sense, seeing that people are actually taking it seriously. And then obviously, I don't know if you guys have it where you are, but at 8 p.m. Uh, our time like everyone starts like flickering their lights and like oh. ringing bells off their balcony for all the frontline workers. Oh, that's so awesome. it's like, it's like a cool kind of get together. Everyone knows that they're in it. Um, they're not in it alone. So LA has done something like that. I don't know if other places in the U S have done it, but yeah, I've seen it. They do it. Lot. They do it at 7 PM here in New York. Every night at 7 PM, people will kind of go out to their windows and, and give a round of applause. It's real. It's one of my favorite things I look forward to every day. It's just that moment of like feel good and solidarity, you know? Yeah, you know, it's exactly. great when you're sitting on your couch and like, if you forgot, it's so loud that like you hear it and it goes on long enough that you can grab something and just kind of pop out there too. And people are getting really into it. They're now grabbing like a pot 
and a spoon and they're going like all nuts. I feel like people are just getting real wild with it. It's like their one chance. <laughs> Yeah, it's the one chance to make a lot of noise, and it's it's acceptable, you yeah. know. Usually oh everyone's very quiet and respectful, but yeah, we have like this little cowbell that I had gotten, I don't know, oh, nice. gift basket. So we're just like shaking it really loud, but no, I, obviously that that's been a cool part of it. And then when it comes to like my family, like me and my mom, we we talk constantly every day. Just to, you know, for her, she's uh, diabetic, so when all this came out, mm -hmm. I saw like the the list of the people who are at higher risk. So I was always trying to keep up with her and just make sure that, you know, she's staying in good health. And she's been doing like a lot more than usual. Like she would actually be getting up and do some running in the house or some Tai Chi. And I'm just so excited that like she's taking it in the right, you know, light and actually trying to be active and combat this as much as she can by staying in the house. And then it just comes with my brothers who, you know, I remember when I was their age, you know, I was a little hard headed and, you know, didn't believe everything that was going on in the world. So it's just trying to get them to understand the importance of making sure they stay safe and healthy because that will only make sure that our mom stays safe and healthy. I love that. They're, they're 19. Oh, actually, no, they're 20. That's crazy. Yeah, they're 20 and they turn 21 on May 9th. So. Uh oh, and you're going to have to be like, you are not, well, they're in Canada. So I guess 21 is yeah. not as big of a deal, but no going out for your 21st yeah. birthday. That's right. Yeah. Keep it well, in check. Exactly. Even if they could go out now, there's there's no opportunity. But yeah, in Toronto, it's like, or Canada's 19. So I think they've pro they probably already did that. But it's crazy <laughs> to think that, like, my younger brothers are like now 21. Like, you know, and I don't think of myself as that old, but. You're not 21. that old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, pr I promise you're not that old. Uh, do you, so this coming Sunday or Mother's Day is coming up. Yeah. Have you like, do you, are you a good son? Are you going to send your mama something? What's your mom's name? First of all. Novlet. Novlet. What are, what are you going to do to make her day feel, feel extra special? Because yeah. I feel like, especially now you got to, got to look out for yeah. the ones you love. No, yeah, no, I always, no matter where I am in the U.S., I always send her flowers. So I have this one company in Canada that does it very fast and efficient. So I'm definitely going to look online this week and send her something nice. You Aww. know, it's tough because my brothers, they like, they they live with her, you know, and I expect them like, come on, carry some of the weight. Like you're in right? the house every day, but I kind of have to do it for all three of us. So, um I don't know. My girlfriend was trying to get me to like figure out a way to like bake some stuff and send it to her. And I'm just like, I don't know if that's going to work, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We got a couple of days. So that's what everyone I've like talked to some of your teammates and I'm like, so we're having Mark Anthony K on. What can we ask him about? Everyone brings up food. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's true. I love food. Especially I had, I heard something about an apple pie that you make oh. the best apple pies in the league. And banana uh, bread, which yeah. I saw. Or some banana so, bread coffee cake or something. Yeah. Coffee cake banana bread. Yeah, it has like a coffee cake like crumble on it. What? So. Yeah, what? no, honestly, I, I, I don't know. I, I love baked goods and now I have the opportunity and the patience to actually take the time to bake. So my girlfriend got me into it, but then I kind of like took the lead in certain things. And, you know, one time she was like, oh, I'm craving an apple pie. And I was like, all right, you know, I got a lot of apples. Like, let me try to put this together. And I thought it was going to be easy, you know, and I'm like going through the recipe, like, okay, cut up the apples, like mixing the sugar, make the, like basically the filling. And then I'm like, oh my God, like I don't have like pie crust. And like, I didn't want to go to the grocery store. <laughs> so I didn't even realize that like you ha either you have to buy it or you have to make it. So now make it from I'm like, scratch. from scratch. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm not ready for this. <laughs> so I end up finding a recipe where it's just this all butter like uh, crust. And it was honestly, it's the best part of the pie. So oh, now yeah. like, I'm just so excited yeah. when I have to like make it in my hands, rolling the dough. And that's, that's the best thing I've made. And I think I'm just going to perfect the recipe over time. But that apple pie is like, it's unbelievable. I'm here for that. That's amazing. Well, another thing, uh, this week we, um, we have this, uh, initiative called MLS Unites and this week MLS Unites to discover new. And we were chatting earlier and you said that something that you've kind of gotten into something you discovered during this quarantine is yoga. Yeah. So you bake and then you do yoga. This sounds all very like peaceful yeah, and life good, sounds for, pretty good, good for the, the soul. How did you get into yoga? 
So I always knew that I needed to like resort to yoga just because, you know, my lack of flexibility or mobility on the field. And, you know, that's something people always throw at you. Hey, do some yoga, you know. And I think um, what I've realized during this time is that you now have more of an opportunity to try new things because you're at home. Right. And sometimes in our busy schedules, we feel like, ah, oh, if we try something new, it might take away from our productivity for, for other things that we're focusing on. So now I, I, I don't really have soccer to focus on. And I'm like, yeah, these home work workouts sometimes are challenging, you know, to get out and find a field that you're not going to get kicked off of. So I'm like, what else can I do in the house that's not as strenuous on my body as a lift? but can actually continue my mobility and flexibility in the right way. So yoga was a thing. And one of my teammates told me about Peloton, which is having like 90 days free, like no contract, nothing. Oh, yeah. I was like, might as well try it. So now it's like, I'll just in the morning, I'll do like a 20 minute yoga session. It just feels good. And it gives you a time to just, you know, breathe and understand what's kind of going around in your space. And it's just like a little moment to yourself. And like, I'm still like ticking off certain things like, okay, my quad flexibility, my hamstring, you know? So like my trainers, like I can go back to them and be like, Hey, look at this. I did yoga for like 85 days out of 90 days. Right. So, um, no, it's been good. And I'm trying to create a habit out of it. And hopefully like out of this whole quarantine, it actually becomes part of my routine. Uh, you I love we, that. Suzanne and I have been on different interviews. We've had different guys on and we ask everyone like, what's the quarantine trick. And I feel like a total disaster when I answer that. Cause I'm like, I don't know. Like, do you have an answer? But I feel like you kind of have all the all the answers. Yeah, like I think it's just, you know, really taking the chance to do things you always thought of and you push back in the back of your mind. And now you just have so much time to focus on them. So like whether it be yoga or baking or now like me taking the opportunity to kind of make my own like uh, IG live show where I kind of like dive into the journeys of supporters and fans and how who they were before LAFC and how they got to LAFC and what the future they want LAFC to kind of give everyone. So, you know, I, I basically I look down the road and I'm just like, OK, when I'm done playing soccer, like mm -hmm. who do I want to be known for what I want to do? And like I think that's something in broadcasting or TV personnel. Oh, that was something. That. Yeah, that was something I realized, like, OK, I think. That's something I would be good at, but like, let me start laying the groundwork now. And this is a great opportunity where everyone is at home and like, I'll have so many people I can interview and it's just, people are all going to listen. And it's, it's nerve wracking at the beginning. I'm sure you guys can all remember your first time going in front oh boy. of the camera. Yeah. So, but once you get <laughs> over that hump, it's just, it's so much easier. And the fact that I don't have, like I said, soccer or other things to really focus on, I can put all my energy towards that. You're so wise, Mark Anthony. My gosh, no, this is, I wish you could have like coached me when I was first coming into this industry, but I'm very glad you mentioned your IG show because that was something we wanted to, to ask you about. And I know that you kind of mentioned the broadcasting thing when you were injured um, in 2018. I know you stepped in to a few of the LAFC broadcasts and how, what, it, what do you like most about being on that side of the production and then also i want to ask how this whole idea for your own ig show came about yeah so um yeah like you said when i was injured i had the opportunity to be on some of the broadcasts i think that i've done a good job over the years of playing soccer and being around it to really understand how the game works and you know then going to lafc and having a coach like bob bradley who really understands football as like an educational purpose right <laughs> so it's like oh, yeah. it just opens your eyes to different parts of the game and i just always want to share my insights and i feel like you know me talking about football is just so easy right it's natural and also i think that i've gotten pretty good at being in front of a camera and being articulate and getting my points across so i was like why not try it in a pressurized situation on like the levels of the pros like you guys so I, I had the opportunity I was so nervous it was like I remember the first time <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's so weird like it's different talking to someone right yeah or talking in front of a camera and the person behind the camera you see them but like talking into a little camera like and you just see the red light and you just got to keep your eyes on it was oh. really weird they were in they were in my ear the whole time being like Mark Mark look at the camera like look at the camera because I would just mm -hmm. be like looking off, you know, into the <laughs> distance. 
Hey, so, but you know what? <laughs> you said like knowing about soccer and like the other stuff comes because it's one of the most unnatural things in the world to like yeah. look natural doing it. But yeah, yeah. Having an eye for soccer, that is not natural. So like you have yeah. that and yeah. like that puts you way ahead of it. So yeah, I think that's yeah. awesome. Just putting yeah. yourself out there. It makes it a lot easier. So obviously, like I said, there's a lot of skills I got to develop, but that's going to come from trial and error. And I have plenty of years before I right. really need to hone down on it. But yeah, you're 25. We have guys like Jeff Lorenowitz and Michael Parker showing us, hey, you could you could easily be in this league till you're 36. So oh, you got wow. your, your broadcasting career may be far like a decade away. <laughs> yeah, I just I just want to set down, like I said, a foundation where it's like. They know already. And and it was like, even with uh, when I was with Benny here at LAFC, he started mm-hmm. to kind of get into that. And mm. he was showing me like games he would practice going over and stuff like that. So I was yep. like, see, he's starting at the end of his career. Like, I kind of want to start earlier so I can like adapt and grow as like the whole production game grows too. So Super smart. Okay, so, so tell us about this IG show because this sounds really, really cool. Yeah, so obviously um, one of the first things when I came to LAFC that really shocked me was how much the fans and the supporters were behind us before we even had a team, before we even won some games, you know? It was just, I remember we had a preseason game at UCLA and these guys came out in full force, like just for a preseason game. I don't even know what the other team probably thought. They were like, these guys are like intense, you know? So I was (laughs) like, everyone has their own story and I think, the more, you know, light that gets sh- sh- uh, shun or shine, shun or shine, whatever, on, shine, on me, shine. yeah, shined on me through my career and what I've gone through, um, it just makes me want to, like, find time to talk to people about what they've gone through. Because it's always like, hey, Mark, tell us about the time at TFC, you know, you got released. How, how, how was that getting over it? I'm like, oh, my gosh said this 3000 times, you know what I mean? So now I want to give the opportunity to, for people to tell their stories about how they came to LAFC, what LAFC means to them. And the supporter group leaders, like they're the ones who really constructed this massive thing. And after only really two full seasons, like on the world stage of football, LAFC is there, you yeah. know what I mean? And we've only been there for two years. So these guys have figured out a way to do something that a lot of teams who have been in the MLS for so long haven't done. So I want them to have the opportunity to tell their story, who they are, and then how how they got to this point. Is a future guest going to be Bob Bradley? And is he as scary (laughs) as he appears? I think Bob has got to be farther down the road. I think I got to, I got to, you know, show my, uh, my skills in that, in that sense, before I get him on me and Bob, we got a great relationship. Like Mm -hmm. he's like a father figure to me. So um, I know, (laughs) I know we'll have to, you know, do some things on the field in a good way before I get him on my show. But um, no, nah, for sure, I would love to interview him. And Bob, he's not that scary. I think. Okay. If you don't know him, he can come across that way. But once you understand who he is as a person and what he's trying to achieve through his work, and he always wants the best out of everyone, then you you never take it in the wrong way. And I think. The players who can understand that are the ones who grow the best underneath them. I think if you're always kind of fighting it, then you don't make it easy on yourself. So, no, Bob's not not too scary to me. He actually is cracking some jokes today on our Zoom call about me posting. What kind of like, what kind of jokes? So, we have two bike routines, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> bike, uh, Bob is probably the best biker in the entire club. Like, what? He will, he will bike for like 50 minutes. I don't is even he know crazy how many miles. Yeah, he's crazy. He looks fit. it. Yeah. He does. So like <laughs> I I I've been doing some of the bikes they sent us. And it's not my fault the bikes are only 15 minutes or 24 minutes long. Like I'm just following whatever was sent. So I guess like, you know, I had a good <laughs> bike. It's hard after I take a photo. I got like the pool downstairs in the background. And then like on it you can see like the time and like the miles. So apparently like Bob saw it on Instagram and was kind of like he ended up sending his to Daniel and he probably like matched mine times five, you know? So he would like, the first time I sign on, he's like, Hey Mark, how's the bike going? You know, like, I don't think you should be posting things if you're only, you're not going to bike as hard as me and stuff like that. So it was like a funny joke. Everyone was like laughing at So he's a cool Oh my guy. God. I, yeah. I love that. 
are, Suze, I've told you this story. Coaches are crazy with their fitness sometimes. I think it's like yes. their inner yeah. athlete is yeah. still there. Well, they like, got to they gotta continue to scratch that competitive itch when they're the, not the yeah. ones out on the yes. field. In Atlanta, like, as the guys are kind of like, you know, moseying onto the field, like getting out there, it's kind of like pre, pre, pre training. Frank is crushing like dozens of push ups. And yeah. I'm like, what are you like, doing? Like, they can't help themselves, managers. Yeah. They really can't. I think, I think it's a mentality thing. I also think that 100%. It, it, it gets the players going. Like, if you see that's your an coach example. putting in that much effort, like Absolutely. you know, like okay, he doesn't expect anything less than what he's giving, and what Bob right, gives right. is 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 a lot more than I think we can give at this stage because he's just unbelievably fit. <laughs> but I think it's a right mentality to have as a coach. I love that. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, you mentioned uh, this incredible supporters culture that exists mm-hmm. at LAFC every game at Bank of California Stadium. The thirty two fifty two are just incredible. It's like one of my favorite game day experiences ever. And last year, when, it was the first time I had experienced the you guys had won a game and Walker Zimmerman, when he was with the team, led everybody in the start out with the yeah. sh- and then it gets builds and builds and builds and then everybody's singing it and so obviously walker is now with nashville but mark you have kind of you've taken over that role so how did you become the guy that starts that champ because i love that so so much it's such a cool experience yeah so obviously walker was the guy when he was here and um, you know, obviously everyone was shocked by the trade and within, you know, about a week I got a call from Richard Roscoe and he was like, are you sitting down? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm sitting on my couch. And he's <laughs> like, he's like, you ready for this? I'm like, yeah, like well, what's going on? And he's like, we want you to lead the chant. We want it to be you, Mac. And I was like, I'm like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, you're, you're the next guy. You got to do it. And I was kind of nervous because I was like, ah. Oh, like, I haven't been really paying attention to how Walker does it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of just there, that. like, jumping up and down, making noise, you know, pushing my teammates, just having a good time. And I'm like, now I got to lead this. No, like, man, it's pressure. I'm like, I'm like, all right, like, you guys got to walk me through it, you know? And I remember, like, you know, I'm done playing a game and I think we had won. And they're like, all right, they're like, Mac, you got to go do it. And I was mm-hmm. like oh, you guys are actually serious about that. You know? <laughs> I'm like, my team has left the field already. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I go and we kind of like walk through it. And the fans are, are amazing. They're like, people they can't are, see it, are. but they're like making eye contact with me and they're like telling me the timing and like when to throw the punches. <laughs> and like, I actually messed, I messed up. Yeah, they're directing me. I messed up the first time. I guess I was like, when you like, you're supposed to shush them before you do the punches. And I guess yes. I was just like, I got them really hyped up. And then I was just so excited. I just started punching. Just jump the guns. <laughs> All right. So I, I, I improved the next time. But no, I think that's like a great opportunity to just like be thankful to like the, their support for the game, you know? And like, it's just our way of showing them that we see them all the time and when we Mm. win if we can share that moment with them it's awesome and then obviously we spoke about having other guys come involved so we had like Bryce who's like you know rookie to the MLS had got his debut in Champions League which is unbelievable to think about it's unbelievable and you know we had him in there and it was it's just a cool experience it's just a bonding idea that reminds us that we're all in this together it's just one big family it's so oh. cool. It's such a, I, that's my, like one of my favorite traditions that I've seen in, in MLS. I've just always been so blown away by the supporter culture in LA and at LAFC games. So I love, yeah. I love that you're the guy. I love that you're yeah. the guy now. It, that's it's so crazy cool. because, um, so actually, uh, Marshall Smeltzer from Dortmund, like when we had played Dortmund, we had connected and we still talk every now and then on Instagram. And he like, was like, so amazed by it he was messaging me he's like oh my god that's so cool this is a guy who plays at Dortmund in front of like the yellow wall you know and then he was sending me videos of like uh a team in Turkey that does the same thing and he was like you got to do it like this next time and all so it's cool to get like that world recognition from guys that's high praise yeah high praise really awesome so we have to ask you because we've gotten some 
pretty interesting answers over the past few. I don't remember, Suze, why we started asking about this. I think we started <laughs> because Will Trap has one L in his yeah, name. Yeah, and I was like, And okay. we've had interesting names ever since. CJ Sapong, okay. who, by the way, doesn't know why his name is CJ. So, <laughs> so there's no name. pressure. There's no pressure here. Mark Anthony K, but you said, you know, people are pretty <laughs> as Mac. When I first heard your name in the league, I think I assumed it was like Mark and then Anthony hyphen K. How did you yeah. get the name Mark hyphen yeah. Anthony last name K? So um, my mom was big into like, I think Roman or Latin literature. And um, obviously I was named after the Roman emperor. It's like Mark Antonius, Hello. right? So, yeah, so it was pretty powerful. At a young age, I always knew, like, oh, yeah, I'm named after this Roman warrior. You know, him and Cleopatra were kind of like a thing. Oh, yeah. So I, so I actually <laughs> have a, t- I, a thing. I don't know if it was, you know, everyone was okay with it, but it, it something happened. Right. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, so I was named after after him. And it, it's, it's a cool story because, uh, you know, for who he was, I feel like that's something I'm trying to emulate in my life as, you know, a leader and like a warrior for his family. So uh, I thank my mom for naming me that. Um, what does your mom call you? She calls me Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony. Like, and you know she's serious too. She's like, yeah, Mark it, Anthony. It's like no one, when I was a kid, my nickname was like Marky, right? You know, it's shorter, sure. it's easy to say. And my mom would always, if any of my friends called me Marky in front of her, be like that's not his name his name is mark anthony and i would just be like kind of like <laughs> my head out like guys i told you like don't say that so now it's a little different she understands that like i get mark now because mark is just it's quicker to say it's more of the soccer world you know it's mark anthony's very long on the field so mm-hmm. now that name has come off to the field which i respond to both and then mac has just come out of i really I think it was laziness out of whoever called me Mac first because <laughs> they didn't even want to call me Mark or Mark Anthony. They're just like, you know, we're, we're just going to put it all together, Mac, right? And it started, I think it started to grow as like when coaches wanted to put initials like on starting lineups, they would just put M-A-K. So yep. then people were referring to me, Mac, okay, Mac, you got to take this guy on the corner. Mac, you got to be here. Mac, you got to be there. And then when I got injured, the whole thing of return of the Mac came and it just blew so up good. So, yeah so now like that's Stop my it. that's that's my soccer name whereas it's mac everyone's like hey mac like and i'm like oh, i i understand i i embrace it it's kind of like my my branding now and i'm kind of gonna okay. roll with it yeah, yeah. Okay. okay on on that name thing then why mm-hmm. is your instagram handle mark the whiz <laughs> yeah there's a good <laughs> so um <laughs> when i was younger <laughs> When I was younger, um, you guys know who Wiz Khalifa is? Oh, yes. Yeah. So when I was younger, I don't know. People were saying that I looked like him, you know? So Twitter had just come out, and I was, like, trying to make a handle. And I was like, okay, everyone's, like, calling, saying I look like Wiz Khalifa. Like, how can I add Wiz into it? And then I was like, oh, like, you know, wizards are, like, magical things. You know, when I'm on the field, I feel like I'm creating magic. So this is me at a young age, like maybe like 14, 15. I'm sizing you two up. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I see it yeah. a little bit. A little. Uh, maybe maybe when I was younger. Tattoos. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get you some face tats. Then you'll be all set. <laughs> but yeah, so I kind of just rolled with it and it stuck really well. Like, you know, I feel like a lot of people have had to change their Instagram handles or Twitter oh, yeah. handles. And, like, mine has just been Mark the Wiz. And now it just – it's it's it sounds good. And I think everyone's happy with it. So I'm glad I chose it. What does Carlos Vela call you? Does he call you Mac? And what can you tell us about <laughs> Carlos that nobody knows? Uh, what does Carlos call me? Hey, you. <laughs> um, I think he calls me Mark, to be honest. I don't think okay. he uses Mac. No one really says my full name unless I'm probably in trouble. So, yeah, he probably calls me Mark. And one thing that people don't know about him is unless you, you're close to him, you don't realize how nice of a guy he is. Like, he's, Aww. like, probably the you sweetest guy on our team. Like, Aww. he's just, like, for – like, I can't imagine being in his position where you're the best player in the league. You're on one of the best teams. You know, you've, you've had this illustrious career. And you're still able to just be such a humble figure in the locker room. Like he's always playing, playing jokes with people. He's playing ping pong. He's playing foosball in the morning. He'll walk through and he'll be like, good morning, everybody. And I'm just like looking at this guy and I'm like, 
damn, like, if he's doing it now, I got to continue doing it, like, forever, like, you know, so yeah. he's just, he's just, like, the sweetest guy and just cares about everyone, so it's amazing, out of, out of a DP like that is, is unbelievable. So, I have an obsession with um, soccer hair. Is like yeah. one of okay. my favorite things to talk about. And last year on a show I hosted called Twim, we had a soccer hair bracket that Carlos okay. Vela won because yeah. he does. And you've seen it up close. Like that is yeah. an incredible head of yeah. hair. And yeah. I have always been dying to know yeah. what he uses in his hair. Like what kind of product. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mark, um, can you give yeah. me any indication? Have you ever seen inside his little vanity bag or inside his locker what product he is using? Because I, it's I, I can't get over how shiny it is and the yeah, condition. It's it, just it just it's incredible. Move. It's incredible. Yeah. So the thing is, is I don't know if he puts in stuff and it puts <laughs> like stuff in his hair before he gets to training or something. But <laughs> like I'll see him like before he goes out to the field, and he'll just be in front of the mirror, and he'll just be like putting water on it like he just puts water on his hair and it kind of just sits there like Dude, you know i haven't been doing it wrong we have all this <laughs> yeah. <now>. i've got <laughs> look at all this i don't know i just nonsense. i just think his his so hair is like his hair is so thick that like it already has so much hold to it just, the water just adds a slick just, back look. just gives you know it that, I mean? that extra glisten yeah it just puts some water all right, uh, I'm ready to go. But it's genet genetically the blessed. Hair. Yeah, it's funny talking about the hair because this year he 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 came to training with like braids, and I don't know how many people know about it, but he yeah he got I think he, he got his wife to like braid his hair what? so he had like these like cornrows for a little bit. Do and you then have a pet? Did you, did you no, sneak a pet? What? No picture because I thought he was gonna keep it. You know, like when Carlos comes with crazy hair or any different yeah, kind of hair, like... we kind of just see it and we're like, I. Right, Whatever, like, we'll float your boat, man. Like, just put some goals in the net. Oh, my but he God. Came, yeah, so he came with the braided hair. And it was like really, – and he had spoken to me a couple of days before because we had a player on our team last year, Peter, who would get his hair braided. So Carlos was like, hey, do you know anyone who could braid my hair and stuff? I want to get it done. And this – like, he's like – he plans this stuff. So it was really cool to see him actually go through with it. <laughs> That's incredible. I, that is yeah. intel that we did not know. On yeah. the note of getting to know inside the LAFC yeah. locker room, we have a couple rapid fire questions for you. Okay, cool. And this is when it gets real wild. Okay. Um, it just first instinct who comes to your who comes to your head first. Okay. You're not gonna get in trouble, they're very easy, I promise. <laughs> All right, so getting to know LAFC, simple, easy first one. Who's the biggest bookworm? <sighs> Oh, man, it's crazy. Like, first person who came to my head isn't on LAFC anymore. It was Aaron okay. Kobar. He okay. He was always, re always reading a book. Um, but now I would have to say it's probably uh, Bryce. I see him. I think Daniel Guzman, our strength coach, got him into reading some books about, like, financial peace, which I should have read when I was. <laughs> Yeah, I could use that. I, I'm regretting it now. I'm reading it now, and I'm like, oh, I wish I read it two years ago. But uh, so I think, yeah, I would give it to Bryce right now. I see him okay. Okay. Who would plan the MLS Cup after party? Me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, let me take this on. Who's yeah. the biggest diva? Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to say Dio. Dio, yeah. I, that one makes sense. That actually makes a lot of sense to yeah. me. Who is the biggest fashionista? Ooh. You know what? I would have to say Tristan Blackman, but Carlos is like second, very close. Yeah. Carlos is very close. But Tristan, Tristan is who gave you up for the apple pie, by the way. Yeah? Oh, yeah. my guy. My um, guy. Yeah. And I didn't know if he was messing with me because I got no, it through no. Tyler Miller. And I'm like, are yeah. they messing? Like, did you like kill an apple pie? And they're like making me bring this up to him. <laughs> no, but we now know they good are guys, all very yeah. good. All right, opposite of fashionista, who needs like the most help, like with their lungs? <laughs> uh, he's not on the team anymore. It was Walker. That was the easy one, I would always say. Walker yeah. knew he's that a, about himself. Yeah, he's a, he was no, like, but he's improved he, drastically. Yeah, he's improved drastically from improved. day one to now. It's 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 amazing. Most um, improved also. Yeah. <laughs> so um, on our team, I'm gonna have to say, I, I would say it's Latif. 
I think he just throws too much stuff together, and it just sometimes it doesn't come off. <laughs> he's, he's trying too hard. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Who is the uh, who's the pretty boy in the locker room? Who's the one that's just like always kind of fussing uh, with their their? I would look? say pr- probably Brian Rodriguez. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, class clown. That could be me too. Cute. Okay. Yeah, I would say it's probably me. According to that, I like that. And who would you call in the middle of the night? Let's say, like, your car broke down, you needed help. Who's the guy that you're calling first? Uh, Dayon Yakovic. You yeah. completed the game. <laughs> Thank you. I have one more question for yeah. you. I saw um, the other day you hosted an Instagram live, a little happy yeah. hour and yeah. Jill and I host oh, an yeah. Instagram live happy hour every Friday at 7 PM Eastern. Sure do. And we are looking for any tips, advice that you can give us what worked for you on this happy hour. What didn't, cause we need help. Mark. What, what didn't work for me was my Wi-Fi connection with my <laughs> guest wasn't the best. So people were just commenting, like, no sound, no sound. No and sound. I was like, okay, I can hear them. Like, I'm going to keep going. But so that that was probably the, not a good part about it. But I think the best part was just allowing people to ask questions and then actually send in requests to the video. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think I shocked a lot of people when they would send in a request and I would answer and then oh, you know you have a little on. conversation that's like cool minutes. they say who they are and how they're they're handling this whole quarantine and then they say bye and it's, it's funny because i had said that early on like send in the request and i will you know choose certain people and i would like choose people and they would like deny the request so i was like guys if you're not serious about getting on then don't, don't send the request but they're exactly. just uh, I think they didn't honestly believe me, but now they know. So that was a cool part to get the engagement high. Oh, I like that. That's Susan a really good. Susan, I probably good... learned in this one that Pictionary is a lot of fun and people like it. And then not to overconsume in the happy hour. Yes. I think we both had one <laughs> one too many glasses of whatever it was. And it just we went were... really long because we just got really excited. <laughs> started yeah, rambling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I what agree. else are we going to do? <laughs> All the time in the world to talk. So it's okay. seriously. Well, Mark oh. Anthony K, thank you so much. This was a blast. Um, thank you guys. We can't wait to actually see you in person. I know. I, I okay. Next time I am at Bank of California Stadium, and you guys win Teach that game. Shush. I'm gonna be. Wa- I'm gonna be watching very carefully. Okay. <laughs> the shh, and then get the build up going. But I cannot. I cannot wait to be a part thank of that you. once thank again. You. I appreciate it. You're no, the best, be Mac. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank Stay you safe. Time. What a, just a lovely guy, Mark Anthony. Wise beyond his years. I I really, really enjoyed that that conversation. I know he, he really does have that kind of presence about him. And I have to give um, a big shout to my friend, our friend, Amy Acevedo of Center Midchicks, who I reached out to and kind of picked her brain a little bit about him uh, ahead of this interview. And she told me he is 100% her favorite player. So this is going to be. She'll be thrilled with it. So thank you for the help. Thanks, Amy. Um, and thank you, Mark Anthony K, for the time. That was so much fun. Jill, what we got on tap? Oh, lots. Lots, There's lots, lots on, on tap. On. There's a lot <laughs> going on this week. Um, well, there actually first, is. First of all, I am very excited because on Wednesday, more of more of this duo, the Jill oh, and yeah. Susanna, the Jill and Susanna show is going on tour. Um, we will be a part of the MLS Classics remix broadcast. It is going to be Oh my gosh, this game was so much fun. This is from the playoffs last year. Seattle hosting FC Dallas. I was at the game and we are going to have Reggie Cannon and Christian Roldan with us on this broadcast. And we're going to relive what was one of the craziest, craziest games I've ever been at. So that's going to be a ton of fun. I'm very, very excited for that. And then we have MLS Idol. You guys, if you have not watched... MLS Idol, it's our new MLS talent show where we're looking to discover the hidden talents of MLS players. We debuted last week. Uh, It was so much fun. Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. We're going to announce the winner of week one on this next episode. So tune in. We've got four new contestants, another guest judge. I mean, I'm telling you, Jill, there are some like really, really talented guys. 
you you did a you charlie rapstone uh did a really great great fantastic job Thank kicking you. that off you really really did and i have to also fun. give props to our players who man like do i wish i was even I, half as talented yeah. as them they're not only professional athletes but like like oh, ronald I, matarita and his drawing holy moly an artist. he's an artist i mean he's like really really good you so know it, here are all the beautiful cool. silver linings of quarantine though <laughs> right jill what's your hidden talent what i don't you have one it? like what's i your- don't I don't have one. I downloaded TikTok. I've done that a couple times. It's online private shopping. because it's that bad. Yeah. Online I, don't, is I don't have a hidden talent. I don't even have a non-hidden <laughs> talent. Do you? Oh, you're a fantastic singer. Yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe our hidden talent is drinking on Instagram live because that's exactly what we've been doing every Friday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. <laughs> And we played Pictionary this past week oh and it was gosh. a blast. And the uh, viewers all got super into the comments and they were like helping really us fun. along the way. So join I... us for a beverage, will ya? And let us know if you have any suggestions because the Pictionary thing was hmm. really Good fun. bar game. Pictionary. We need a good bar game for Friday. Yeah. We, need a, we need to figure out something really fun to do because these are, I like, it's great getting in, involved with the fans and having them interact. And we also had, Christian Roldan was actually in- the comments yeah, he was a big part of it so that was kind of fun but join us friday 7 p.m have a drink with and me next and week on the pod we've got two guests because it's a very special pod for us Suze. do you know why why i don't it's know it's our birthday what it is our, our anniversary birthday oh my gosh we are one wait we have to like next episode we really we really need to do it up big i don't yeah, know i'm, not, I'm afraid of what that means but we do I feel like there might need to be a bottle of champagne involved or something because I got to get online and order that. That's just add that to the list. (laughs) Please come to my door. Thank you. So guys, join us for our birthday party because we've got a week to plan it and it's going to be a freaking blast. Oh, I'm excited. That'll be great. Happy birthday, Suze. Happy birthday, Jill. Cheers to you and cheers to all of you. Thank you for listening and watching. Continue to be safe and stay healthy. We appreciate you. Have fabulous weeks, everyone. Bye.